Want to know the secrets to a having a happy lifelong partnership? What can we learn from healthy couples? Welcome to Passion Unlimited Podcast. I am your host, psychotherapist, author, and founder of Fearless Love, Gianni Adamo. Not all marriages look alike or start out the same, but what resilient, healthy couples have is that they've achieved the ability to grow together. They might have faced a ton of challenges and somewhere in their journey, they've decided to embrace a spirit that moved them from inflexibility to adaptability. From a spirit of fear to a spirit of courage to change. In today's episode, I will be discussing the nine aspects that healthy couples have to help you create lasting love. Stay tuned to the end as I will be giving you an exercise to bring these parts alive in your relationship and put them into practice. So anyways, um, as you guys know, I love working with my couples and I love to see relationships flourish. So this, this really does bring me a lot of joy to even present the, these episodes to you. Um, even if you never come through my office or my practice, I am just thrilled to be able to support you in your journey to creating healthy love and lifelong partnerships. All right, so with that, the first ingredient of a really healthy partnership comes in the form of trust, mutual trust. Trust is the belief in the reliability, the truth, and the ability or strength of your partner and in yourself. So here, relationships are built on trust towards one another as an aspect, excuse me, they're built on trust towards one another in every aspect of life. So when I start my couple's intake process, one of the first questions I will ask is, you know, can you rate from a scale from one to 10 where you feel like you trust your partner? One day and I trust them fully and I have like no questions. It's trust is like implicitly available in my relationship. I don't really have anything to worry about. And then 10 would be, I do not trust my partner like in anything, not with child rearing, not with financial management, not getting my back, not with fidelity, not in communicating to me what's important in their lives. Um, not trusting that there hasn't been or won't be betrayals. And as we know, trust is the foundation for a healthy relationship. So when you can answer that question and say, you know what, I really can trust my partner with the kids, the house management, you know, anything and everything in your life, then this is, you can breathe a little easier. This is not a place where you're going to be getting a ton of chronic stress, thank God because we know the chronic stress is a major problem for your health and your longevity. All right, so that doesn't mean though when you have mutual trust that there won't be a break in your confidence in the future, because there can be. There could be some form of neglect, miscommunication, or even some sort of affair that breaks your trust. When trust is broken, however, you guys both will look at this from let me take responsibility for me, they take responsibility for themselves, and then you guys come together in the spirit of let's repair this uh, rupture, and let's rebuild and return to our sense of compassion and understanding and respect and goodwill in this relationship. So basically for you guys who have trust and know that trust is super important, you guys will always prioritize your ability to rebuild that trust, okay? So number two out of nine um, aspects and features of a healthy 
uh, relationship. The second one would be openness. Here, honesty between the two of you is super valued. There is transparency. You don't have a secret life. You're not keeping secrets from one another. You each can speak truth without fear of judgment or punishment. And there is, there is plenty of room for disagreements and to agree to disagree because no two people are exactly alike. You can hear the differences without becoming uncomfortable and you can still state your position and affirm your partner for having their position. You don't need to be like Siamese twins and everything has to be in complete agreement. So conflict is a natural part of a healthy relationship and it's actually a means for personal growth. So therefore you do keep this open and honest uh, environment in your relationship. The third aspect of a healthy relationship is mutual respect. Respect is a feeling of deep admiration in your partner, elicited by their abilities and qualities and achievements. And the reason why I wanted to say that that way is because it's really, really hard to respect someone who doesn't respect themselves and therefore are lazy, lack ambition for their life, and really like their life is in a dead end. So it's really difficult to maintain a position of respect when you know that your partner is not respecting themselves. So here, mutual respect is admiration and gratitude in sharing your life with your partner and vice versa. You value each other. And if one of you is out of line, you can quickly apologize and realize like you don't, disrespecting your partner is, and your spouse is not lining up with who you are and your intentions for your relationship. The fourth uh, aspect of a healthy and happy relationship is there is commitment. And commitment would be the dedication or a vow to love, to respect, to cherish. And it takes, and it places two people on equal grounds. Basically commitment to the relationship and to your ability to grow together takes center stage. Okay, this is unlike a relationship with a narcissist where there really is no commitment, even if they verbally say they're committed to you, they are not because a relationship is one sided and it's about pleasing, caring, and doing everything the narcissist wants and not hearing and wanting to accommodate what the partner wants. So, in a real healthy, loving partnership, there is true commitment which puts you both on equal grounds. Okay, so the fifth aspect of a healthy relationship is laughing and having fun together. Laughing and playing together cultivates a strong friendship that can help sustain you through the rough patches and move you through the storms of life. There's nothing more sexy and bringing you alive when you have picked a partner who can laugh, who can go out with you and be best friends with you. And when life is rough, they can still make you laugh. They're not the stick in the mud. It's kind of difficult when you are partnered up with the stick in the mud. And if they are, then you might want to call it out and be like, hey, can we try to be a little bit more laid back around these things. When there's failures, when there's challenges, the best thing to do sometimes is laughter. Laughter is the best remedy. Shared common goals, values, and faith would come in as number six, and they're not in any particular order, by the way. They're all necessary. Okay, so here, it used to be that couples found each other at work, at, in high school, in college, at church, basically people used to marry the boy or the girl next door. That made it very easy to be with someone that shares your personal values and faith. 
And that's important because that grounds you in your relationship. Today, it's more complicated. As we know, today we now have apps that connect us to people worldwide, not just in your, even in your own state. So today we end up having long distance relationships, virtual relationships, and they all count. I've had many individuals call me that, you know, their partner is in London or they are in Sweden and they've been back and forth between the two countries. And it, there's a lot of challenges. And plus then there's the cultural differences. So there's a lot of things to navigate when we have the, you know, it's a luxury basically that we can now select a partner from anywhere in the world. But now we also have to navigate all these differences. So it's important that when we do make a mate selection and when we are together with a partner for life, that we do share values, that we do share the same faith and that we also share the goals. That means that if they're not exactly the same, they need to be supported, okay? This seventh um, aspect that I wanna talk to you guys about that's necessary for a or having a healthy and happy partnership is sexual fulfillment. Healthy relationships have fun inside and outside of the bedroom. So flirting, spontaneity, playing together becomes the prelude of a very vibrant sex life. And basically what happens with sex is that sex encourages self-disclosure, knowing our partner more and in intimately physically and emotionally increases a positive regard or fondness for our partner and helps to create a positive cycle of connection and devotion to one another. Yes, devotion. I know it's an old word, but I like using that word because it really kind of hones in on what our love and our sexual fulfillment does with our partner, this devotion, which is part of our commitment. Number eight, we are conscientious of each other's needs. That means we have some sort of awareness that our partner does have needs that uh, we want to take care of for them. So each person brings a set of needs into the partnership, which usually is asked of the partner or the spouse to take care of. We have needs to uh, be seen, to be heard, to be appreciated, to be supported, to be loved, to be taken care of. Needs, um, there's, you know, need also just to have our own personal space and solidarity at times. All right, so it's important here to know that the needs can be met creatively, with creativity. I think part of the situation is when couples get stuck or an individual gets stuck and thinks that the need to be expressed or the need to be heard has to happen in a particular pattern or way. If we can take the patterns or the way away, break that, and you become more open to allowing your partner to meet those needs in creative ways, you're gonna be a lot more successful. Okay. And the ninth aspect that I want us to look at before we get into this really cool nifty exercise is, is the pursuit of personal fulfillment, okay? It's wonderful to be together. It's wonderful to always be sharing, you know, all these values and, and life goals and anything else together, but you also need kind of like your own life a little bit separate from your partner. There needs to be some balancing act there. So each person here is responsible for their fulfillment, okay? And you're all, so you're responsible for your fulfillment. Your partner's job is to encourage you and support you to pursue your personal fulfillment. Um, whether it's changing your career, whether it's exploring a new hobby, maybe you're returning to school. I know with this pandemic and a lot of people are unemployed, that's what they're doing they're actually changing their career. So they're going back to school and that's really cool. 
So although love naturally creates an interdependency on your partner, your fulfillment doesn't solely rely on them. And that should make you feel more free. That should give you more space. So on your ability to dream and then take the courage to make the changes in your life. So don't always pin it on your partner that you can go run a marathon and start training for the marathon because your partner doesn't support that idea. If you believe in your dreams and in your ideas, then start taking small steps towards it. Let your partner see how committed you are to this and they'll usually come alongside and support you. All right, so now let's go into the exercise. And this exercise is gonna hopefully bring all these parts together for you and so that you guys can be more collaborative and come together as a unit, as a team and exhibiting these aspects. All right, so the first exercise is going to be creating a new vision for your marriage. And that's what I said, a new vision for your marriage. Most people get married and they have all these ideals and dreams, but they're not really discussed. They're not brought to the surface. They're kind of unspoken. And somehow we think that magically they're going to happen and that magically we will get to all these things without ever speaking a word or ever discussing these things. So I want you to take out a piece of paper and a pen and I want you to start creating a new vision for your marriage. And I want you, each person in the partnership, to do this. I want you to write down the things, idealistically, that you would want to see in your desired marriage or relationship. The first question that I want you to answer is, what does it mean to be married? I want you guys to discuss that. What does it mean to be married to you? I want you to discuss or write down ideas around your goals for the next five years. And what about your lifelong goals, maybe before you die? So consider like shorter term and longer term goals that are really important. So I'm gonna go through uh, examples for you in a minute, but right now I'm just gonna give you the questions first and I'm gonna give you like a whole bunch of um, examples from actual clients that I have worked with. What are some of the connection rituals you want to honor? We come from different families, we come from different cultures, and all of those things dictate what is normal for us, what is desirable for us, and what is not. So write down some of those connection rituals, and that would be maybe like the hugging and the kissing when you say hello and goodbye. Those would be connection rituals. So that's what I mean by that. Another um, question or aspect that I want you to start considering and answering is, what is the meaning of family for you? What are traditions that you would like to embrace? What about what is the importance of children in your partnership? The importance of money in your partnership? And what about education? What part does education play in your partnership, right? Because most of us want to keep learning. Most of us want to keep growing. And a lot of times that means we need to head back to college and create some debt for ourselves. Or maybe hopefully we can work and put some money aside so that we can cover that. So all these things have to be discussed. What is the importance of fun, play, and adventure in your partnership? Again, these are things that I want you to consider and write those things down. What does interdependence mean to you? And that might be very interesting. Uh, your partner may have a completely different view of what interdependence means, and you guys may have to come into some sort of agreement. Again, the power here is by bringing things into the light, into your uh, awareness. So once again, we're creating a new vision for your marriage. Each of you will have the opportunity to write down answers to those questions. And I'm gonna read to you some of the examples that I've gotten from the couples that I have worked with. 
All right, so one couple, this is what, how they answered these questions. And they want to enjoy lots of laughter. They're, so this is their part of their marriage vision. They want to enjoy lots of laughter and happiness. They want to support each other. They want to have loyalty and friendship first, protecting a relationship from anything that could hurt it. They want to experience life together through trips, children, novelties, and adventures. They want to be kind and respectful and don't want to take each other for granted. They want to keep excitement in their partnership through spon spontaneous trips, learning together, learning new things about each other and about themselves. They want to have great conversations. They, the husband wants to be a good husband and make his wife happy. And again, here is to make her happier because um, you can't make a miserable person happy. So the miserable person has to find their reason why they're miserable, deal with it so they can be back to some sort of neutral ground. And then it's easy for the husband to make them happier or vice versa if the wife is trying to make the husband happy. Okay, uh, playfulness and random dancing is one of the things that they want to embrace in their relationship. They want to be successful in both of their careers and their financial goals. They want to have a loving, tight-knit family unit and have most dinners together. They want to schedule by weekly dates, holidays, events, and family gatherings are important to them. They want to buy a nice house and keep it organized and clean. They want to buy a vacation home in the mountains. And they want also the wife, this one is for the wife, she wants an art studio in their home. And they both agree that they want to be living debt free. Okay. Then I have another couple, and this is some of their answers to those questions. They want to be partners in all aspects of life. That means financially, emotionally, and with their children. They want to start a side business together. They want to travel to different countries and go to the national parks together. They want to resolve problems within their marriage and only seek support from balanced people. They want to resolve conflict from a place of understanding and compassion versus attack and blame, which is the model just about everybody uses. They want to start a family in the next couple of years. They want to foster animals. They want to be on weekly dates. They want to make new friends as couples, not just individuals, but other couples that they can go out and do things with. They want to att attend a financial course together and set up a retirement account and create a budget. They want to go to the beach and be active uh, with outdoors activities. They want to purchase an income property and they want to buy a boat and spend time there using the boat with friends and family. Okay, so now that you have, an, you have a really good example of some of the mission statements or mission um, visions for the couples, the next piece is I want you to create a mission statement that's gonna be like the umbrella that guides your marriage and your partnership. And basically, this is gonna be a short statement on to why your partnership exists exactly. Why your partnership exists. Most people don't even think that way. But again, the more we can bring to the light, the more power you've got. All right, so, so some examples here is to grow in love together and choose happiness every day. A partnership where all aspects of life are shared and we work towards each other's happiness, which is kind of similar, but a little different. We support each other's goals, dreams, and find enjoyment in each other. We embrace a growth mindset in our marriage. All right. So now that you have the, uh, um, the marriage uh, 
it's a mission statement and your marriage vision. Now I want you guys to marry those lists, blend them and unite them. So create a document that has both yours and your partner's um, aspirations and goals and desires for his or her marriage with you. And then the next step is to go ahead and review this statement once a year, whether on your wedding anniversary, on your engagement, on the first of the year, when you guys met, whatever, whatever date you guys decide that is going to be your mission, you're going to be reviewing your marriage vision, vision or your relationship vision. That's the day you guys have come into agreement and you do that every year and you commit to that. So, okay. The other thing about this statement is that it's a live breathing document. That means you can take things away. So like once you have your boat, you don't need to keep that there because you've got your boat. So you can take things out that no longer need to be uh, achieved because they have already been achieved. As you grow and develop and mature, additional needs and desires and wants and goals will come alive for you. So please keep amending and changing as your relationship amends and changes. And that's the whole beauty of le learning to grow together because we're not stagnant. We're not static people. The only thing that's constant in life is change. So embrace it. So add whatever new things you can dream of and then allow yourself and your relationship the space to grow into what you, you personally and your partner can dream of. All right, so this is a relationship reboot series on Passion Unlimited podcast. If you want to go from surviving to thriving in life, love, and relationships, please subscribe wherever podcasts are heard. You can listen to me on YouTube or watch me on YouTube and please leave comments, um, give me a thumbs up. You can join our Facebook group, my Facebook group on Passion Unlimited Podcast. And my newest endeavor is to release the audio book of, uh, From Love Trauma to Fearless Love. I'm aiming for the end of October, at the end of this month, um, October 2020 for Halloween is what my aim is. Please um, feel free to find me on fearlesslove.net. Request a free 15-minute consultation if you want to speak with me. You can find the book on Amazon. And till next time, talk to you soon.